fuck Trump. Like, I don't want, I don't want to be where I'm at. I don't want to be in this headspace, and it's his fault that I'm here now. And I just, it's just, he's just a kick in the crotch to everything that I ever thought democracy was, and everything that I ever thought that I stood for when defending and representing this country. And I have more videos like that one to play for you. That's from a user on TikTok, US Navy Vet 1990, and is a veteran expressing the most justified feelings you could possibly imagine. You know, we talk a lot about how it's hard to imagine as someone who's serving or has served someone s supporting Trump with that experience, given what Trump has said regarding veterans, right? The way he's disparaged them, whether it be John McCain or his suckers and losers comments or his Arlington National Cemetery behavior. But something that's so important that I haven't really until that TikTok made a point about on the show is think about if you risked your life if you made sacrifices, sacrifices that many of us could not possibly imagine, in the interest of the very values that Trump is constantly just spitting all over, right? Why do people feel motivated to go and, and serve the country in that capacity? Well, often it's because they understand the importance of the values that we should be striving for, and they want to protect those values, like our constitution, like our free society and our democratic republic. And in Trump's behavior, if you really inform yourself on it, it's hard to say that the way he acted in trying to hold on to power, even though he lost that election, statements like the government should come down hard on media outlets he doesn't like, statements like the termination of the constitution post, what runs more contrary to fundamental American values than those? And thus, what disrespects people more than, or I should say, what disrespect people more who were willing to sacrifice their life for those very values? And so that response you're seeing in that TikTok to the rhetoric and behavior of Trump is, is as justified as it gets. Then you have a retired brigadier general from the army saying this. Focus on it in a way. Um, why do you think that is? Donald Trump is always focused on grievances and past uh, issues that have come up. He, he, is, he has never been focused on the way forward like Kamala Harris is. She is all about hope and optimism and making this country better again, whereas Donald Trump just wants to turn the table. And unfortunately, there's tens of millions of people out there that believe Donald Trump, that have been essentially deceived by his lies, his con game that he's played with the American people. We cannot let that happen again. Okay, okay, so we've absolutely got to ensure that he never again comes up uh, as president of the United States. I mean, so many. So correct, and that's Steve Anderson. And he's responding to a question about this bizarre poll, I'm pretty sure, that was mentioned by the CNN host there, that shows more voters perceive Trump as the change candidate than Vice President Kamala Harris. Now, that's a tough one to read because is that. Is that good change? Because I see Trump as a change candidate. It's just change that would be terrible. But you understand a little bit why people would say, well, Kamala Harris is currently in power, so she voted the change candidate. But if you're perceiving that as good change, and Vice President Kamala Harris represents a bad status quo, I guess see my last years of content about the records of Trump versus Biden-Harris to refute that one. And then you have this TikTok that we looked at in a different segment of another veteran. Donald Trump dodged his draft. He bragged about it, laughed at American soldiers. Donald Trump dodged the draft. Paid a doctor to make up bone spurs. He shirked his duty, laughed at the dead. Now he thinks he deserves to be president. If he wouldn't serve, then why let him serve now? Can you come up with a reason? Can you make it make sense? And side note, TikTok has chosen on the end of those videos to assault our ears 
every time a video ends. Uh, <laughs> every time. But yeah, correct stuff there. Draft dodger. Most vile rhetoric probably of any presidential candidate about veterans in history. And then someone who, who violated the most basic part of his oath to the Constitution. Something that so many people have died to defend. And so the question that a lot of people ask with the statements we're referring to that Trump has made that should get all veterans to not want to vote for him, the behavior, and recently he's now threatening election workers who don't participate in the election in the ways that he wants them to, meaning if they don't guarantee a victory for him, then they've you know participated in election crimes. He's going to go after them if he becomes president. That recent post that we covered and the termination of the Constitution thing, these just outrageous posts you would think would be disqualifying for someone in the eyes of Americans. Why don't enough people know about that? Morning Joe talked about this. You, you look at what Donald Trump is doing on the eve of the presidential debate, talking about violence, talking about bloody deportations. We're going to have deportations and they're going to be bloody. Uh, talking about uh, the January 6th uh, rioters as patriots uh, and saying that he's going to get them out of jail, mocking once again Nancy Pelosi's husband uh, getting his, his head smashed in uh, by somebody that was spouting Trump talking points. We could go down the list, but he is doing that right now. And this whole idea that we see in the media, that, oh, well, the left wing says this, you know, the right wing says that the, the false moral equivalencies, I think, are really laid low. But this is some left wing, right wing thing. When you see Dick Cheney, Liz Cheney and all of these generals that work for Donald Trump saying the man is unfit to be president. I um, am a little discouraged at how the mainstream media is covering the race like you are, Joe. I, I, listen, what he said over the weekend deserves a headline this morning. It deserves a headline. It would get a headline if Kamala Harris said stuff like that. That's for Yeah. And luckily, more in mainstream media are talking about the double standard in mainstream media. MSNBC reported, uh, Chris Hayes specifically, as Media Matters highlighted, that, quote, everyone's grading Trump on a curve. He does not sound like a person who should be anywhere near the nuclear codes. And this was a segment about how the, the quote unquote, signs of slipping from Trump that could be age related for him too, don't give the coverage that, that they'd get if it were a Democrat, as we have an example of prominently. Uh, but hopefully more of those discussions are had in mainstream media because it's, it's one of the disasters, the great injustices of media coverage in American politics, which is, as was mentioned there, if Kamala Harris said one, one of the things that Trump has said on True Social, one of the more dangerous things he said, not all of them, but just one of them, she, her career would collapse. The reason is, let's just take the termination of the Constitution post, because that's one, given how outrageous it is, and given how few people know about it, blows my mind daily. Imagine if she had posted that ever in her career. Not even the last few, few years like Trump, but as a teenager, she said that. You'd have mainstream media interviews with her where the whole interview is asking her about that. Fair, do it. But Trump sits for one interview after another and doesn't actually get asked about that or a bunch of other things. Or I'm going to press you until you either leave or give me a straight answer on why you think it's constitutional to have engaged in the fake elector scheme. That's all we're going to talk about for this entire interview until you give me an honest answer. But we're used to it with Trump. And so that means if you're an outlet that really wants to prove, regardless of the facts, that we're the most nonpartisan and we're going to show you how we're both sides, we see bad in both sides. Yes, we all see bad in both sides. Doesn't make the bad of equal magnitude. And so when you're making that your single priority, then if Trump has done 10 crazy things and Kamala has done zero, or let's say there's one negative story you could cover justifiably about Kamala Harris, 
then you're going to have to do 10 minutes of coverage about the one bad thing for Kamala Harris and 10 minutes of, uh, 10 minutes of coverage about the 10 bad things of Trump to show, look, we're balanced. But that's not being accurate. That's just weird, meaningless neutrality. And that's why, as a lot of people have been pointing out, the New York Times homepage as uh, screenshots have been circulating after Trump posted that threat against election workers, no mention of it. But you have your Trump and Harris neck and neck in the polls, your horse race politics. You have debate coverage, how Trump wins and how Democrats blow it. My teenage son thinks the world's falling apart. The truth is, he's right. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's kind of... Imagine being a parent. This is a side note, but your kid comes to you. I think the world's falling apart. Damn straight, kid. Welcome to the real world. Here's a beer. Go to bed. Um, yeah, but no mention of Trump threatening election workers. Okay, great. This is the mainstream media failure that makes people so angry. And good for... Morning Joe, that show's discussion, and, and Chris Hayes, and hopefully many others, about this double standard. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments. Click the join button below to support the show and donate to Kamala Harris' campaign in the link in the description.